here this morning. Come on. This morning, man, on this Sunday morning, give God some praise. Come on, y'all. Come on into worship this morning here. Yeah. As he risen, come on. Got you up this morning. Come on, you ought to be enthusiastic to be able to give God some praise. Come on, y'all. Yeah. 
Father. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity to be in your house one more time. Come on, y'all. Lord, he is risen. He is risen, man, this morning, and we ought to be excited that he has risen. And we just thank God for his grace and his mercy this morning and how wonderful he has blessed us and he has covered us, man. And so we ought to let God know how much we care about him and how he has kept us through this pandemic. And, and though the numbers are increasing, we are falling in his favor. Lord, have mercy. The numbers are increasing and we are falling in his favor. And we just thank God for being able to bring you a virtual service this morning to be able to go ahead and continue to be able to get the word of God to the people of God throughout this difficult time and this tough time. And we just thank God for being God all by himself. And so join me in a word of prayer as we go ahead and go into a word of prayer this morning here as we get prepared for the bread of life right now as we get ready. Oh, great and mighty God, we come to you right now, Father. We thank you, Father, for your actual grace and your mercy, Father. We thank you, God, for keeping us and covering us right now, Father. God, we just thank you, God, for doing your will in us there, Father. And we thank you, God, for keeping us one more actual day. God, as we go ahead and break this bread of life, God, we pray right now that this word of God will help your people, God, and cover your people as we continue to move forward in this actual journey. God, we pray right now, God, that, that you allow your word to be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, God. That, God, that anyone that's going through any type of sickness and illness right now, God, or going through any type of actual process of getting themselves filled, God, and getting themselves back whole again. God, I pray right now, God, that whatever's hindering them, God, that you allow them to be able to be called back to you, God. God, I pray right now that whatever burdens that are on our children's lives, dear Father, that you remove them. Whatever burden that's in our individual lives, individual and collectively, God, as a body, God, that you remove those things. God, I just pray for healing right now, God, and I actually pray to remove cancer out of those lives who are battling cancer, God, and ask you to restore your actual healing because we're healed by your strength. God, I pray for those who are dealing with the actual loss of loved ones, God, due to this pandemic, God, because we know that all things work according to you, for, for your good, dear Father. Uh, and we they work together for your good, dear Father, because we know that whatever there's a will, God, you will find a way, because you are God that will always, always protect us and cover us, God. So God, put the heads of protection around your children today, God, as we get ready to go in and embed into this bread of life right now, God, because it's a living word, God, and we trust because your word did not come by word only, but it came with power. Come on, somebody, and the Holy Spirit. And God, we thank you right now, Father, that we trust in you, God, and believe in you, because you are the one that gives us strength to keep persevering. Though this journey gets tough, though this journey will get get dark. Sometimes this journey will feel as though that we're in quicksand. But God, we're going to rely on you and lean on you because we're going to cast all our cares on you, God. So God, lift up your people this morning. God, allow this word to be an inspiration. Allow this word to be a, a illumination. Allow this word to be a confirmation to equip your people to compel them to move forward in this thing called life. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray that, Father. Amen. 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 And so this morning, I want to go ahead and the lines of uh, moving forward. And I want to go ahead and just give a side note today that whenever you have the opportunity to take the actual, the vaccine, I encourage you to take the vaccine. I'm, I'm telling you this. I have put my name on multiple lists. And whenever the opportunity presents itself, I will be taking the vaccine for the corona virus. So, there are many myths out there, but I'm privileged to be living with an actual first-line worker, my wife and a daughter who are both registered nurse, and they have done their due diligence and the research, and my wife has already taken the actual initial shot, and she will be taking her second shot. And I encourage you out there that you don't listen to these hopes and these actual people who are with these isolated and unsubstantiated 
actual versions of the horror of what the actual virus of the vaccine will do to you. But I ask that you take the actual shot because I truly know that God used medicine to heal his people. I wouldn't say this without the confidence of knowing that the actual shot doesn't work because I live with someone who has taken the shot. And so I ask that right now that in good faith and believing that God is going to cover us and keep us, that we all be obedient so that we can get past this so we can get back to a place of worship as a collective body so we can fellowship and love on one another. And I won't try to haste to move you into a natural environment when I know that there are things out there that we're going to have to get through. But it's going to require us to be wise and be patient to be able to understand that God is speaking now. And I wouldn't ever come to you and give you any information that I feel as though that I haven't researched and done my due diligence and to seek the experts to know what is the best thing that we should do. So if you have any doubts or whatever, I will ask that you get with your physician, talk to your doctors, talk to those people who are the real MDs and not the actual Facebook MDs, not the people who are passing all type of hopes and stuff out there discouraging you, but I'm here to encourage you that in order for us to get past this pandemic, we too have to do our part to be able to make sure that we can get through this thing. Amen. God has done his part, so it's time for us to do our part so that we all can move past this. Amen. With that being said, I want to go ahead and move forward with today's text today. And I pray that God has given me a word for you this morning because it is an uplifting word and encouragement. We'll be coming from the Old Testament in the book of Isaiah this morning, Isaiah the 43rd chapter. Coming from the first to the seventh verse, we'll be reading the English Standard Version. When the text comes up, we'll go ahead and start with this text as we'll be reading seven verses this morning. And the reading of God's word goes this wise. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Sebo, in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my eyes and honored, and I love you, I gave men in return for you people in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created, for my glory, whom I formed and made. Let us go to that second verse. It says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. If I could take that second verse and speak to you for a moment, I will talk to you the evidence of God shining in your life. The evidence of God shining in your life. A Hindu trader in India once asked a missionary worker, what do you put on your face to make it shine? With surprise, the man of God answered, I don't put anything on my face. But he said emphatically, yes, you do. All of you who believe in Jesus seem to have a certain type of shine. Then suddenly the Christian understood and his face glowed even more as he said, now I know what you mean and I will tell you the secret. He says the shine is not something we put on from the outside. 
But the shine of God is what lives and comes from our inside. Follow me, church. And it's reflection, and it is the reflections of the light of God that has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit by accepting his son, Jesus Christ. And far too many of us lack the shine of God in our faces, on our faces, in our lives. Because when we can look back as far as yesterday to see evidence that God has shined upon our life and brought us out of something that was trying to hinder us from living our life. And just because we may be enduring a season of trouble, we can all rest assured that weeping may endure for a night, but our joy will come in the morning. Because the shine of God can never be dampened or put out due to unfavorable circumstance. I need you to catch this this morning. And sometimes we easily forget what God has done in our life. And today I would like to reflect on the evidence of how God has always been present even when we had to endure unfavorable situations within our life. And in today's text, these verses have a primary interpretation to the nation of Israel. Because God is promising to sustain them by delivering them from captivity, from the Babylonian captivity, and ultimately gather them together back from that captivity. But they still had to learn how to endure through that captivity. And, and some may say that these scriptures should only refer to the nation of Israel. However, these verses can also refer to us today as Christians, as we are the seed of Abraham. And we are, have been adopted into the same promises that God has given to his children of Israel. And as we look into today's text today, we see a tremendous application that I believe that will aid us through the current events of our present time that we're experiencing today. And the first indication that will aid us and assist us that God is shining in our life, that there's evidence of God that's shining in our life, and that we are his chosen people, is that God had delivered them from their past history. God has delivered us from our past history. You see it in verse 1 in the B clause. It says, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. She checked this out, church. See, many of us love, would love to forget our past history. But it is through our past history we have become who God created us to be so that we can make better history. Follow me here. See, there's a couple of things in our former life that we should always remember. And that is, we have all been redeemed and we have all been renewed. Catch that. We have all been redeemed and we have all been renewed. See, 1 Peter 1 and 18 and 19 verse puts it this way. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless and spotless lamb of God. See, we all have to come to the realization that certain things that we were holding on to in our life was only preventing us from reaching our potential. And it was only capable of giving us an empty result. I'm helping someone here this morning. 
And some of us would have never been able to reach our potential if we would have never allowed ourselves to be redeemed from our past history or our past hurt or our past disappointment. So let me explain. If you wouldn't have never mustered the courage to leave what was hurting you in your life, come on somebody, you would still be asking God for the strength to endure the consequences of the pain that you were trying to live through in your past life. And if you needed your life to turn around, you had to leave what was empty and what was not supplying your needs, come on, so that you could start living a life that was full of potential where God was calling you to. And God told me that, that you are not rich today because of what your family left you in an inheritance. I'm trying to help somebody here. He says you are rich today because of what your father promised you so that you could be a part of a far greater inheritance. Y'all better hear me here this morning. And he has accepted us just as we were. For that reason alone, and we have a life full of potential because God does not allow his children to live a life on empty. Come on. I don't care who you are or what you've been dealing with. If you're dealing with something that's not fulfilling you, if you're dealing with something that's not pleasing you, if you're dealing with something that's not trying to enhance you and help you, then it is empty and God is calling you to move to your fullness. Come on. Because when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says in John 3 and 16, for God so loved the world, meaning he loved you, that he gave up his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, not in that old life, not in those things that are empty, not in those things that are not trying to help you, but to have an everlasting life. And when you have an everlasting life, you are living in a life that is full of potential and opportunities. Come on. When you have an everlasting life, you're living in a life that is full of hope because the love of God has redeemed you from a life that was hindering you to a life that will always fill you. And many of us are stuck in places in our life that we're allowing those things to hold us back and keep us there. And they are hindering us from what the potential that God has already laid up for us. Because he has already given us all he's going to give us. And that is his son, Jesus Christ. God says, I got an everlasting blessing for you. Just like the everlasting, the ever ready buddy. He said he keeps going and going and going. And God said, as long as you allow yourself to be able to accept the gift of my son dying on the cross for you, you should not be living anything empty. You should be on full. Come on, somebody. You shouldn't be having those empty conversations. You should be on full in this season. You shouldn't have folks holding you back. You should be full in this season because you're so full of potential. And many of us and many of us are stuck there because we don't realize that we've been redeemed. Many of people are holding us in those actual dark places and those unproductive places and don't realize the work that Jesus has done on the cross. He says on the cross at Calvary that it is finished, meaning that it was finished for you to be able to deal with someone to mistreat you. It was finished for you to keep dealing with stuff that wasn't trying to enhance you. It is finished for you to walk away from stuff that's not trying to be lucrative for you. Jesus said it was finished because he's got something everlasting for you. Lord have mercy. But even when you have been redeemed, you have to ensure you leave your name so that you can be fully renewed. Lord have mercy. Even when you have been redeemed, you have to leave your name so that you can be fully renewed. Let, let me see if I can push the text. Can I push this morning? See, when God said in verse 1, he called them by their names. See, this implied that he had an intimate knowledge of who they were and what he wanted them to become. Follow me here. I'm going somewhere. See, when God calls us to something new in our life, he usually changes what we were 
to what we are about to become. Oh, come on, somebody. When God calls us to something new in our life, he usually changes what we were to what we are about to become. Let me see if I can explain this for you. See, Jacob's name meant trickster. But God changed his name to Israel, which means prince with God. Abram's name meant high father. But God changed his name to Abraham, which meant a multitude, a father of a great multitude. See, don't miss this. What we were called, before we got to let we have to let Jesus erase that with the blood that he shared on the cross let, let me say that again what we were called before we got to know Jesus it was erased by the blood of Jesus based off of the finished work of the cross you ain't got it yet let me say it again you got to get this what we were called before Jesus Test us now. Before we knew him, before we had a relationship with him, was erased by the blood of Jesus when we accepted him as our Lord and our Savior. And your own name, watch this, is no longer what you are supposed to answer to. Come on, somebody. Because you have a new name that has been given to you. And that name is based off of what died for you. When Jesus started to renew you, I'm trying to help somebody here this morning. Let me make it plain for you. See, you don't have to answer to what you were, but you only have to answer to who you have become. Lord, have mercy. You don't have to answer to what you were or what people say you was. You only answer to what you have become because you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Come on, somebody. Because David puts it this way in Psalms 51 and 10. He says that God create me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. See, when your spirit get right, that's when you start acting right. Come on, somebody. When the spirit of God gets right in you, that's when you start living the way like you're supposed to. That's when your potential starts showing up. That's when your expectations, you start living up. When you start living with the right spirit, you get rid of that dead stuff in you, and God will start moving you to an everlasting life. See, what used to upset you, come on somebody here, should not be able to get to you no longer. Come on somebody. What used to upset you with the right spirit should not be able to get to you. What used to keep you up late at night should not even get a minute of your sleep at night. Come on, somebody, because you got the right spirit. What used to drive you crazy should only make you laugh and make other people think that you're crazy because you have the right spirit, because God has renewed you so that people can no longer make a fool out of you. Come on, somebody. Many of us been living a life of foolishness when God is trying to get us to a place of luxury and of, of expectation because he loves us so much. God has given up so much for us, for us to be living a foolish lifestyle with individuals who don't even have a care for us. And you shouldn't be up late at night any longer worrying about the things that kept you up. You shouldn't be sitting there running around crazy trying to get your mind set because people don't have no care for you. You shouldn't be sitting there trying to make things right when people don't want to get it right. You need to understand that you have a greater expectation on your life because God has redeemed you and renewed you to a better lifestyle. And God has told me to tell you there is evidence that he is shining in your life there's evidence that he's shining your life because he has renewed you and he has redeemed you. He's renewed your mind so that you can think better. He's redeemed you so that people can't call you what you used to be and you can move to better. Come on, somebody. You don't have to worry about what folks say you used to be. Come on. You already know who you are supposed to be because you know who you belong to. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to help somebody. See, God was reminding the Israelites that he had taken possession of their life 
and they were all his. Watch this, watch this. Meaning, at the very moment we gave our life to Jesus, he took possession of our lives, and we now belong to him. Lord have mercy. Y'all don't know when to shout. The very moment we gave our life to Jesus, he took possession of our lives, and we now belong to him. See, what used to be your problem now became his problem. Lord have mercy. What used to be your issues now became his issues. Come on. Because Jesus is the master to solving all kinds of problems. And you don't need to sit there and worry about stuff any longer. Because when you allow him to become your Lord over your life, now he is the one that will govern your life and deal with all the problems, the issues, and the circumstances and the situations that you're dealing with because he has taken possession over your life. And God told me to tell someone this morning that he wants all of your actual possessions. He wants all of your problems. He wants all of your issues. He wants everything that keeps holding you back, everything that you keep holding on, everything that you choosing not to release this morning. He says he wants to remove that because he has taken possession of all of those things. And you have to allow him to have it because if you don't, all he's going to do is going to bog you down. You have to allow him to be able to take it because all you're going to do is going to hinder you from the opportunities and the things that he's trying to move you to. And see, when we take a moment and look back at where God has brought us from in our life, it should give us the power to be encouraged and to give us the hope to where he is leading us for a better future. Many of you sit there this morning have lost hope. You've lost hope in the fact of the government. You've lost hope in the fact of your job. You've lost hope in the fact of your family and your friends. But I'm here to tell you, your hope shouldn't have never been in them in the first place. Your hope should have been in the Lord. And God is saying today that I need you to be hopeful in this season. I need you to know that there's going to be better coming on. He says, if you look through 2020, didn't you see me brought you through 2020? Even when things wasn't uh, uh, favorable, even when things wasn't popular, even when you got bad news and it wasn't the news that you were expecting, didn't I bring you through those things? If you look back as far as this week, I guarantee you, you will see a time in your life where you got some information, something that wasn't popular, something that wasn't uh, productive, and you just realized you just didn't, couldn't deal with it any longer. You just didn't want to hold on to it any longer. But God says in this season today, you can't allow that stuff to hinder and burn you any longer. He says, I'm taking possession of all those things today. Because guess what? It's time for you to let go of that past history. But the other thing you have to understand that God revealed to these people to show that there was evidence of him shining in their life was God's shine was shown in how he provided for them. God's shine was seen in, in how he provided for them. You see it in verse 2, he says, when you pass through the rivers, I will be with you. And through the the waters, I will be with you, and I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. Let me see if I can explain this text for you this morning. It says, if you walk, it says, if you walk. It doesn't say if you walk. It says, when you walk, Lord have mercy. I will be with you. Let me say that again. The text doesn't say if you walk. It says when you walk, I will be with you. It is a reassuring us that God will be with us in our toughest of circumstances. See, walking is the pace at which you use when you are not in a hurry. I'm going somewhere here. When you are not concerned or long about your situations and your issues. When a dog comes at someone 
and, and, and there's a violent dog and you are at peace and you know that you're protected, you don't run away, you walk away because you have the confidence and the ability to know that God is going to protect you. I'm going somewhere here. And when you're not burdened or anxious, then you will learn how to walk. <laughs> Somebody ain't got it yet. See, when, when, you, when you're not burdened and anxious with your problems and your issues, you'll learn how to walk through them because you know God is with you when you're going through them. I'm going somewhere. See, when you're not concerned about your problems, then you'll learn how to walk. See, when you're not worried about how things are going to be taken care of, then you'll learn how to walk in the Lord. Come on. See, when you have problems, you, you, who, who, or you have people, watch this, who don't appreciate you, then you'll learn how to walk in the Lord. Come on, somebody. When you have people who don't know how to respect you, then you'll learn how to walk away in the Lord. Come on. When you have people who don't know how to love you, then you'll learn how to walk away from them. Come on, somebody. When you have people who lie on you, come on, then you'll learn how to walk away from them. Come on, somebody. See, you walking is only the reassurance that you're trusting in God and not trusting in man. Come on, somebody. And until you learn how to walk away from the things that are trying to hold you back, you cannot allow God, God will not be able to restore you in the things that he's trying to impact your life with. Come on. And in this verse, God reminds the Israelite that he had to meet their need every day of their life. And he had pledged that he would always be there and to continue to be there. As long as they walk with him, he would walk with them. Come on. And there are many things in your life that if it wasn't for the Lord, you couldn't walk away from it. Come on, somebody. There's many things in your life right now you got to realize that when you walked away from it, you didn't think you were going to make it out of it. Come on, somebody. But God told me to tell you this morning that he will supply your needs according to his riches and glory as long as you continue to walk away. Walk away from the pain. Come on. Walk away from the disappointment. Walk away from all the things that are trying to hold you and cannot fulfill you. Come on. As long as you learn how to walk away, God said, I will always be there to take care of you when it goes away. Come on, somebody. Many of you are stuck at a place of not walking, but staying. And when you stay in something, you become miserable. When you stay in something, you become sick. When you stay in something, you become unproductive. But God said, when you learn how to walk away, good God Almighty, you can learn how to walk through your pain. And even though the pain will be there for a period of time, he says, I will comfort you and remove that pain over a period of time. Come on. Even though you're disappointed, he says, if you learn to walk away from your disappointment, he says, I will come and I will heal your heart. Even though you feel the brokenness in your heart. Come on. He says, learn how to walk away. He says, when you feel as though you've been uh, 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 rejected, when you feel as though that people have lied on you and betrayed you, he said, walk away. Because as long as you learn how to walk away, he says, I'm here to protect you each and every day. God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus if we learn how to walk away. And then whatever the need is, that need can be met because God will always stand ready and willing to be able to take care of that situation. Many of us have to learn how to walk away, but we haven't. We stay in stuff. We stay in it too long. And God says, I will always provide your need. The Bible says in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, here it is, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Come on, somebody. And tell God what you need. He didn't say for you to stay in it. He wants you to walk away from it. And he says, then when you tell me what you need, then I want you to thank me for what I have done. Lord, have mercy. That's why he expects you to walk away. He doesn't expect you to stay in stuff where people are trying to hold you in, in bondage. Stay in stuff where people are trying to set that and hinder you. When the people of Israel walked through the Red Sea, 
God was sitting there holding back the Red Sea. When the people of Israel went through the wilderness, God provided their needs in the wilderness. Every time you're in a wilderness situation, God is going to provide for you. He said that their feet didn't swell. Lord have mercy. He said that their clothes didn't rip. He said that he gave them this thing called what is this, which was manna that came and fed them every day. Some of you in your wilderness season and you're looking for a way to sustain. And God said, didn't I feed you yesterday and today? Come on. Didn't I have clothes on your back? Isn't your rent paid? Come on, somebody. He said that you didn't have to go back to what you came out of to get to where you are today. He says, you got to learn how to walk away. And he said, if you walk away from it, he says, I will always provide your needs according to my riches and glory. And as I get ready to get out of here, I, I, I can't stay long today as I get out of here. Last but not least, God says, you can see the shine of him, the shine of him in his promises. You can see the shine and the evidence of God in the promises that he has made to us. He says in verse 6, he says, I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. God reminded the Israelite, his people, the nation of Israel, that they had a bright future ahead of them. And he, he promised that he would gather them together and to bring them back to the promised land. Follow me here. I'm finishing this thing up here today. There are times when the valley experience seems to go on forever in your life. There are times when things seem as though that things are not going to come to an end. There are times when the late night experiences never seem as though it will ever come to an end. And there are times when our burdens seem so heavy that we feel that our next step will be our very last step. But the good news is this, as I encourage you as I get out of here, is that these things will have to give up. Come on, somebody. When God calls us back home, Lord have mercy, I'm trying to help someone here. Those things have to give up. When God calls us back home. So the Bible says in Matthew 24 and 35. He says heaven and earth. Will pass away. But my word. Will never disappear. Meaning God told me to tell you today. Yeah, that whatever that has a hold on your children. It has to give them back to him today. Lord have mercy. He says whatever that is trying to destroy your family. It has to give them back to him today. That whatever is trying to hinder you, it has to release you and give you back to him today. Because God has made a promise that he will call us back from whatever was trying to hold us back from him. And he was going to bless us with a land filled with milk and honey. And see, that's why no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And we all can rest assured that God is not like a man that he shall lie. But he will keep his word because his word is his promise. Lord have mercy. And God has told me to tell you today that you need to rest assured that he will keep his promise. You will see evidence of him always providing for you. And you don't have to worry about your past history. God has told me to tell you when the going get tough, He's always going to be there because all you got to do is walk away. Come on. He says, I don't care how tough it is, how rough it is. He says, don't allow that thing to hold you. He says, give it up. He says, everything that has a clinch on you in this season is going to have to give you up. Everything that has a hold on you in this season is going to have to give you up. He says, I'm calling you back. Because you are my daughter and you are my sons. He says, I'm calling you back to the potential that I already had laid up for you. Because he says, I've redeemed you and I've renewed you so that I could restore you. Lord have mercy. 
God says, I've redeemed you. I've renewed you so that I can restore you because there's evidence of me shining all throughout your life. And even when things get dark and dreary, even when things are getting tough in your life, even when things feel as though that it just ain't going to work out for you, God is telling me right now that this is the time that we have to get ready for him to move. I don't know what you are up against right now in this season. I don't know what you have been bearing and holding on in this season. But God told me to tell you this morning, walk away from it. Walk away from it. Don't allow it to hold you any longer. Don't allow it to keep pulling you back. He says, don't worry about what people used to call you. Don't worry about your previous condition. He says, I've called you to an everlasting life. A life where you're going to be a king and a queen. He says, you are actual royalty. You're a high priest. You are actual high deity. And God says that I'm waiting on you to see the evidence of me shining in your life. Based on the work that was done on the cross by Jesus Christ. He says, I will not forsake you. I will not leave you. I have sent my power to live in you. And today is the day that there's someone out there right now that's looking for a savior, that you need to be redeemed, that you need to be renewed, that you want your life back to be restored. God says today is the day that whatever has a hold on you is going to have to give up and release you today back to him. I don't care how bad that relationship is. God says, I will supply all your needs. You don't have to rely on anyone to stay in that thing. He said, I don't care how bad your kids are asking. He says that, guess what? I'm going to call them out of what's got a hold on them. Whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, whatever it is, he says that spirit will be released off of them today. I don't care what sickness has got you in this season. God says, I'm calling you back today. I'm going to redeem you. I'm going to renew you. And I'm going to restore you into who you are supposed to be. He says, because I've given you a new name. And that new name is a child of God. That new name is a saint. Come on, somebody. That new name. You are my children. God says, I'm here for you. I need you to trust in this. Trust in my word. I don't care how long this virus thing has got a hold on us. God says, guess what? When I give my word and say, release my people, the virus will go away. And we're in that season now. While I'm hearing the voice of God is calling us back, but we have to be prepared and ready to walk into what God has set up for us and not allow anything to hinder us in this season. So I thank God for this word. I thank God for your attendance. And if there's someone right now who want to give their life to Christ, the Bible says in the book of Romans 10 and 9, as you confess your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died, God raised you from the dead, you are saved. Give your life to Christ right now. The Bible says that he gave up his only begotten son. That however you come, it doesn't matter what people say or what you look like. God says, I'm the master of taking possession of your mess, cleaning up your mess, and making you brand new. Lord, have mercy. But not only that, if this word has blessed you and encouraged you and caught you in a dark place and giving you light that you've seen the light of God shining in your circumstance, in your situation where you felt as though you were about to give up and now you're encouraged to continue to move forward as that information come up you can go ahead and sow a seed right now and bless this ministry as God has blessed you with his word so we thank you we bless you right now we thank if you get an opportunity to be able to take the actual vaccine Take the vaccine. Cover yourself. And as we get out of here, I love you, First Lady, love you. 
We love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. But always remember that there's evidence that God is shining in your life. I don't care how dark it is. I don't care how burdened, how your burden becomes. I don't care the trials that you're going through. God is only preparing you for greater. May God bless you. I love you, man. And share this word. And I'll see you soon.